The following lesson is a presentation of PrepLogic's Learn Smart video training. To find out how you can get unlimited access to our entire Learn Smart video training library, call 1-800-418-6789. Anytime a new technician comes along, especially when they're first starting out, one of the first questions they have is, Mike, what kind of tools do I need to do my job? I was talking to Steve, the cameraman, just a few minutes ago, and I was like, Steve, what kind of tool do you think would be best for a new technician? And he hands me this big screwdriver. Steve's wrong, okay? Now, for people with a little bit more common sense, Steve's, you know, uh, they will usually grab something like a Phillips screwdriver. Now, these are good tools, and I had a couple of cases in my life where a big screwdriver like this probably bailed me out too. But the reality is, is the real tools that you need are software tools. And I'm not talking about tools that you go buy. Built into Windows are all kinds of powerful system tools, utilities, those words are pretty much interchangeable at this point, that allow us to get a lot of work done. All I want to do in this section is introduce some of these tools slash utilities to you so that you understand conceptually what they're there for. Other sections will take advantage of the fact that you now know them, and we'll go into these in a lot more detail. So let's just do a quick overview of some of the most popular utilities. Before I go into the utilities, though, I want to go into one really, really important piece of Windows, and that's something called the registry. Every version of Windows, going back even before Windows 2000, have a registry. A registry is like this big database, and it keeps track of everything that is, I mean, everything that is your computer. What current screensaver does user Mike want? Uh, what's the resolution of the monitor? Uh, how much RAM is in the computer? Uh, what applications are currently installed? I mean, if there is anything to know about the computer, it's in the registry. Most of the time, we don't mess with the registry directly, but hey, we're nerds, so we do get to mess with it a little bit. What I'm going to do is show you how to manually access and look at the registry. To do that, let's fire up a copy of Windows. This works with any version of Windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Start Run, and what I'm going to type in here is a very special command, and one you need to memorize. It's called regedit. R-E-G-E-D-I-T. Regedit is the way you manually access the registry. So let's hit OK. Now, what we're looking at right here is something called user account control. This is unique to Vista, and Windows 7 has it too, although it's a little bit better done in Windows 7. User account control is a methodology that anytime you do something that's even slightly scary, that it works in such a way to protect you. In other words, it's saying, hey, somebody's about to access the registry. The registry, if, if you mess with the registry and you mess it up, your computer won't boot. I mean, it's a bad, bad thing. So user account control is Windows' way of making sure that you're an authorized person who wants to do this. So here we'll hit OK, or continue rather. And you are now looking at Windows registry. The Windows registry is a big database. It's not a Word document. It's not a text file. The only thing that can read a registry directly is the registry editor. The registry editor shows us five different primary keys that we use within the registry. And guess what? You need to memorize these five. You ready? The first one is H key classes root. H key classes root defines everything there is in your computer. Let me just pick something fun in here. There we go, JPEG. Do you see that right there? What this setting says is it defines exactly what happens when Windows sees a file with the last name JPG. It's defined as a JPEG file, it's, and it's defined also as an image. See right here where it says JPEG file? Let's go through this list and find the word JPEG file. And notice it's in alphabetical order, so it's not that hard to find. There it is, JPEG file. Now, when we look at JPEG file, this tells Windows what to do when it sees it. Uh, CSLID is just an identifier that I, it's a unique identifier that Windows puts on just about everything, including whatever a JPEG file is. It says what icon's going to show up. So if you have a JPEG saved on your desktop, what icon's going to show up. And then here's shell. It says if I want to edit it, what program's going to run it? So what Windows is currently configured to do 
is that if you right click on a JPEG file and select edit, it's going to open up a program called Photo Viewer that's uh, default with Windows. So that's actually pretty cool. You can actually see exactly what's going to happen with any one of these particular programs. So if we have a JPEG and we want to print it, that's interesting. It's that same image uh, printing program, but you put a little command on the end that says slash PT, and that actually prints it. Luckily for us, we don't go into HKEY classes root very often. Now, HKEY current user means what are all the configurations for the person who's currently logged in? This will say stuff like what software do they have access to, uh, what programs are auto starting, what's uh, just about anything you want to know about the current user is, is set in here. HKEY local machine is settings for this individual computer. For example, what drivers are installed for what type of hardware, what house security installed, uh, what programs, default settings for different types of programs are in here. HKEY users is just a list of all the users. Now you'll see these funny codes in here. They don't actually show the real usernames, but one of these that you're looking at right now is what's currently loaded here in HKEY user. So we can actually open one of these up and you'll see that it looks a little bit like, there we go. That looks quite a bit like, if we take a look at current user, see App Events Console Control Panel? App Events Console Control Panel. So this is definitely, this is one of the users that's currently on this computer. There's four different users installed. When you log in, one of these are loaded in to HKEY Current User. The last one is Current Configuration. Current configuration is kind of interesting. For example, certain computers have different hardware depending on their location. I've got a laptop that has this really cool docking station, and when it is plugged in to the docking station, it has a different configuration than when it's not plugged into the docking station. So HKEY Current Config is a very small subset of what's taking place in HKEY Local Machine. The most important thing to appreciate with the registry is that you're going to have your five main keys, and you have to have a rough idea of what those five do. The registry is absolutely precious. If you delete the registry, you're reinstalling Windows. So actually, Windows goes through some pretty strong processes to keep backup copies of the registry all over the place. To open the registry, you're going to use a program called RegEdit. Now, the one thing I want to warn you is that back with Windows 2000, let me show you this on my computer. There was another program called REGEDT32. RegEdit 32 only works with Windows 2000. It was a different registry editor. Now, the reason they did that was because RegEdit was good for searching, but RegEdit 32 was the only tool you could use to actually do editing. This is only true for Windows 2000. It's not true for XP. It's not true for Vista. It's not true for Windows 7. In fact, if you type in RegEdit 32 anymore, it just brings you up to the registry editor. So make sure you appreciate the fact that RegEdit 32 only existed in Windows 2000, and everybody else uses good old RegEdit for any time they want to get into the registry itself. Now that you've seen the registry in its raw form, it's pretty ugly, isn't it? Well, it is ugly. The nice part is, is that we almost never go into the registry directly. About the only time I'm going to type in RegEdit is I'm on the phone with somebody in technical support, and they're like, oh, boy, you got a big problem. Listen, get into the registry, go to uh, HKEY local machine, blah, blah. They have you go down and make some bizarre change. You don't even know what you're doing half the time, but it fixes the problem. So I don't like going into the registry directly unless some higher-level support person tells me to do that. However, we do go into the registry all the time. And the main place we go into the registry is through a big suite of utilities known collectively as the control panel. 